good morning. Oops. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. It's terrific to see you all. We've got a lot of things going on up here, so hang on for a minute. Can you hear me okay? I want to welcome you all to the 2017-2018 academic year. To anyone else, does that sound a bit like a futuristic movie to you? 2017-2018. I find it absolutely unbelievable, but I can't tell you how exciting it is for me to be here with you today. I keep flashing back to a year ago, and it's amazing to me that a year has gone by. So it is just so exciting to me. For those of you who have been on a very well-deserved break, we welcome you back. It's great to have you here and your energy, and we get really excited to see you. And for those of you, and we need to recognize that there are many, many colleagues who for the last month or two have done anything but take a break. They have been processing papers and getting students registered and getting our campuses ready and setting up computers and doing all the things that happen so that we can do our work. Some of them are in this room, you know who you are. Others can't be with us because they're so busy. So I think we should give them all a big a round of applause. I also want to thank the folks who put today and tomorrow together. I want you to know that we're very much aware of the fact that when people do come back, your folk, oh, I have a, thank you. This makes me happy. This is just one of those little clickers, so that's good. Thank you. Um, so we're very much aware of when you come back, what you really want to do is think about classes, and we get that, and that's why we're so proud to be your colleagues. So know that when we've put together this, these sessions, the goal is these are things that you really need, and we hope that they'll be very valuable to you. We're really, I promise you, we want you to come out of this saying, I'm really glad I did that. So let us know and give us um, some good feedback on that. There is an extraordinary amount going on. So it's amazing to me when we put together events like this. Again, thanks to the staff, and thank you to the Cast Iron Grill, who is the food service here on this beautiful Staples campus, who provided that great fruit. Let's give them a round of applause, too. Yes, lots to be thankful for. So I told you last year, and you probably hear me say it a lot, that there was a time in my life when I was not in higher education. And it was odd to me that the, year, the days kind of ran into one another, and there were no new starts and celebrations at graduation. So when I got to come back, every, every year I'm just really mindful and grateful that we get this opportunity to start anew. And it is just something that most people in the world do not get. So I absolutely love this day. And I'll have to tell you that I've been working really hard this year, and you have been helping me on kind of balancing work and life. And uh, how many of you struggle with balancing work and life? Come on, be bold. You're lying. There you go. Hands up. It's tough because we put a lot into what we do. And when you do that, it's really hard to make that balance. So I've been working on that for many, many years, and I will continue until, well, 40, 50 years when I retire. That's what we're looking at, 40 or 50 years. <sighs> anyway, so part of that is forcing myself to take time to reflect, to be mindful in the present, and then to look to the future. Because I get a little, you, I'm sure you don't know this about me, but I get a little kind of crazy. I have a... I'm off or I'm on, like there's nothing in the middle. So I have to really force myself not to always be on, 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 or dead. So part of that is making myself reflect. So today I wanted to reflect a little bit on the past year, then pause about where we are today before we launch into kind of what we're going to be working on this future, in the future. So when we reflect, last year at this time, almost on this very day, I put this little rudimentary pyramid up and talk to you about the fact that Central Lakes College, I was so excited to be part of this college, and every day I'm more excited. Because the group in the blue, those blocks, was very clear to me that these are tremendous strengths of this college. Really amazing students. Um, I am constantly inspired by what they do. I'm not always happy with what they do, but I am inspired by the barriers they overcome and that they keep coming. And Really, they're the reason we do the, our work, obviously. I think of them 
all the time. So we have terrific students. I told you last year that I thought there was a really amazing, passionate college community here, largely because of the time that I spent with you before I joined campus. And you have not disappointed. Uh, you are passionate, talented, and I've told so many people I'd put you up against any group of colleagues in the country. I hope that doesn't mean you all start getting other jobs because then we're going to have a very big problem. But it is true. You are amazingly talented. I was just talking with a colleague about that yesterday. And we rally around a powerful mission that we build futures. We take seriously the fact that we're here to change students' lives. So of course, that's always been the strength of Central Lakes College and always will be. Last year, we talked about the fact that our goal was to really add a foundation and buoy those strengths by creating a culture and a community all based in relationships. This year, we have spent a lot of time working on that culture, but let me start by saying culture does not happen overnight. It really doesn't. It takes time. And you were very forward, and in a good way, about what that culture should look like. Last year, we did some focus groups in the fall of 16 about what is the culture that we want to create here. And we're making really good progress toward that culture. We have a community building team working hard on culture. We are caring about each other's names. I know, you're like, why do I have to put a name tag on? That's because there's someone in this room who does not know your name. I already forgot Dan's name. Where's Dan? Dan, that's Dan, by the way, he teaches math. I did not know Dan's name, and I'm quite ashamed of myself. So names are important to us, people are important to us, and you've all done a lot of great work to emphasize that in your worlds in the college, and that transforms this institution. So thank you for that. We also have spent a lot of time talking about the top of that pyramid, pyramid which is the term student success. Everything we do is about students and helping them to be successful. But the term student success, in my mind, is a little bit like the term politics. When you say it, because everyone comes from different perspectives, our minds snap to different things. If I say politics, this don't tell me what you're thinking, please. Some of you go, ooh, politics, can't wait. And others go, oh, politics. Some of you go right, some of you go left. We all come at that term from many different perspectives. And for that reason, it's a bit loaded. I think student success has always been that way. Some of us think, oh, that's great. You know, we, we really want to rally around that. Others say, gosh, does that mean we're going to make things easier? Whose responsibility is it to be successful? What does that really mean to me? And we get a little worried about it. So this year, we spent time talking about what it means here, and that conversation is not over. But what I will tell you is what it means is we will never reduce rigor. Let me say that one more time. We will never reduce rigor under any circumstances. It will always be the student's responsibility to be successful. They will always be accountable. But it's our responsibility to make sure that they have the tools to be successful, to navigate challenges. I want our students to work extremely hard, just not on the navigation. I want them to work extremely hard in their classes. And I'll tell you that two of my children have been Central Lakes College students. You know, one just graduated. Phew, she's going to Mankato. The other one may show up in uh, one of your classes. Um, if you've not met her, you've probably seen her at a brewery playing the ukulele. And she, that, that kind of says the whole thing. Or even she's on a football field. So she's a very typical student. You know, she struggles with stuff. And I can't think of a better place for her to struggle. If she ends up in one of your classes or one of your offices, Here's the rule in our house. If you have a problem at CLC, don't come to me, Lily. You go to talk to the people that you have a challenge with. So you can absolutely ignore her last name because I know that you will treat her just like every other student, and I'm very confident that she'll have the tools. It's up to her to do it, and I'm not at all confident that she will, but she, it's up to her to have the tools. So we talked a lot about student success. And there have been a lot of concerted efforts to focus on student success, particularly around our students who are most at risk. We have our advisors very involved in all of our programs, and I think that connection with the faculty has really helped the students. I know in TRIO we've done some tremendous work on engaging at-risk students in athletics. We've done some amazing work. So we're really not just talking, we're doing some cool things. And we have a student success committee that has come forward with some great recommendations. So one of the things that you can do and your schedule is look to see when you can get the update from the community building team and the student success team, and please engage with them and, and give them your feedback because they need it. 
So in addition to our little pyramid, we did a few other little things, um, some of which we expected to do, and some of which we didn't. We took a bit of housekeeping, of approach to housekeeping, and worked together to reposition uh, this college. I'll tell you, um, I am not going to share a lot of information so that we dwell on the past, but it is worth mentioning that this work was hard. We did a massive budget adjustment, and we have a lot of new faces in the room, so I will only share. We looked for two years out. We cut about $2.2 million. It was painful. The goals were to position us for the future, to make sure that we're serving students, and to make sure that everyone in this room feels stability and that we don't have to every year wonder what's coming. That was hard work, but you did it. You really did it, and we are in a much better position. That is something to celebrate. Part of that was that the faces in this room also look different. We lost about 17 people, combined effect of our early retirement and some people who just left us far, far too early. So when you look around, our faces look different. And there are people that we're missing, but there are new faces as well. So we need to honor the people who aren't here. Uh, I got a text from Debbie Wesp last night. She's hanging out with her godchildren. I think she just wishes she were here. No, she does not. She's having a great time. <laughs> so we'll honor them and we'll welcome new folks because really we are a strong institution. And then finally, we decided, because we had nothing more to do, to do a bit of a reorganization. We decided that with your input, we had to make sure that everyone, that we had an administrative structure that supported the work that we wanted to do. And most importantly, supported that relationship building piece that we've been talking about. That was not easy, and I know that in all of these budget and reorg, you gave tremendous input. I think sometimes you don't realize how much your input changes what we end up doing. Please, if you find yourself ever saying to yourself, well, it doesn't really matter, it really matters. You gave tremendous input, and we ended up in a much better place because of it, so thank you for that work. We now have all administrators in place. Nobody is interim. And we are all very committed to making sure that you all have what you need to do the great work you do. So that is a promise from me to you. And we have a, a really exciting year ahead of us. I told you last year, because everyone gets very excited about accreditation, don't you? Yep, I thought you would. So I told you that this year we'd be focusing on the Higher Learning Commission reaffirmation of our accreditation. Just so you know, HLC is the, one of six regional accrediting bodies. Participating is technically voluntary, but functionally it's not because you need to be accredited to access federal financial aid. So while it's voluntary, we don't have a choice but to do it. And the whole goal is to help make sure that we're the strongest college that we can possibly be. And I really do believe in the peer process that HLC does. This year is our fourth year, and we had to write um, our assurance arguments that assures the Higher Learning Commission that we are indeed remaining compliant with their five criteria. There's a lot of writing, about 30,000 words, maybe 35, when all is said and done, and literally hundreds and hundreds of pieces of evidence. So many of you had a part in that, and I want to thank you for that. And I have to call Wendy Adamson out because she did a lot of heavy lifting. Thank you very, very much for Wendy. Really appreciate that. So we've got some more work to do, but we did a really good job. And if you ever want to read that, because you'd learn a lot about the college, but you'd need to have a little bit of time, um, it is your document as well. And then finally, in addition to working really hard to help students here be successful, we invested in a new approach to enrollment management. You know that we restructured student services, got a fabulous team there, renamed the Info Center into the Campus Welcome Center, is that right? We talked about a lot of names. Um, and now as many of these great support folks as possible are in the newly named Student Link, right? We have spent real time thinking about how do we recruit students and shifted marketing dollars to make absolutely certain that we're marketing programs, not just the college, that has made a big difference. We're cultivating students who show a little interest in CLC very actively by reaching out to them and getting them good information and showing them what's so special about this institution. It's been a really great year. 
we have come out, I think, significantly stronger. And the reason I reflect, and I'll admit, this is, you know those little emails that I write every couple weeks? You do know those, right? All right, you're the ones that delete them. I know. Uh, the reason I started doing that is really for me to reflect because there's so much going on that it's important to me to look back and go, wow, all the things are voluntary. You don't have to do any of that. And that's what makes this college special. So that reflection is an opportunity for me to learn about all the talent and dedication and also to celebrate that. So that's the reason that I chose to reflect a bit today. I think it's just as important to pause, though, and be mindful um, in my craziness. I often, you know, I really struggle with mindfulness and living in the moment. In fact, I'm, I take him back to years ago when I used to commute, and I don't commute anymore. I was talking to my mother on the phone, hand free, hands free, of course. She said, where are you? And I said, I have no idea. I just was paying no attention. I mean, like, none. She said, well, did you pass that city? And I'm like, I don't know. That's not good. So I've really tried to be more mindful and appreciate what's going on now. So the question is, if we pause and take a look at where we are today, we've got a lot to celebrate. So a few little pieces of data. And I use the term loosely for you statisticians out there. There are no statistics in these data. I will interpret them with caution. And the idea is to provide you with indications about how we're doing. If we can accept all that, I'm going to show you three little pieces. So the first is this focus on culture. We're trying to create a culture that you said should be family-oriented, respectful, based on integrity, where everyone has voice and everyone feels appreciated, among about 30,000 other descriptors. So my question was, are we moving in that direction, even though there was a lot of that here already? Well, eventually, we will do the Great Colleges to Work For survey, and I am confident that we're going to see some good change. But we're not going to do that every year, because you've done a lot of surveys. We happen to have a little bit of indicative data. Ken Doles, where's Ken? Yep, there you go. Ken, last year, was very curious as he and Jesse were developing a marketing strategy in Town Hall, we talked about how we have a really unique experience to offer students, however they come here, studying face-to-face -face or online or stopping in, and we needed to market that. So Ken was really exploring what, how you would describe Central Lakes College. And I thought, when we looked at these data, that this is also an indication about how you describe Central Lakes College today. So Ken's going to share those data with you th today and tomorrow. You'll see them multiple times. I want to give you a sneak peek. This is about a third of our colleagues participated in this. And this is the very highly technical word cloud that resulted in what you described. You described Central Lakes College as a community that's friendly, caring, committed to quality, supportive, comfortable, welcoming, and a whole bunch of other things. This is good. This is indeed a special place. And even, I didn't say it was perfect. Nobody's going to ever have the word perfect on their word cloud. But this is a place to be celebrated. It really is. Even today, last year, 10 years ago, it was a very special place. We're just working to create it and nurture it in the way we want it to go. And that is thanks to each and every one of you. So a good indication that today we've made progress. You know, you can't get very far when you think about a college without talking about enrollment. Some of them say enrollment. Some go enrollment. But it is important, right? So I want to show you a bit of enrollment data. We watch it. Trust me, we watch it. We watch it closely. Enrollment is fickle. It changes a great deal. It changes with the day. So again, interpret this with caution. There's a lot of data I'm about to pop up there. Uh, just um, bear with me. So Wendy tracks our enrollment over time. What you see on the y-axis is FYE. On the x-axis is our, our important census dates for the fall semester. So on the far left, it is April 1st when we open enrollment. On the far right is the very end when the semester has ended. And Wendy just plots. So there are a couple of things that you can see here. One, the college has lost significant enrollment because that top blue line the blue and the green lines are fall 9 and fall 10. And, you know, they were significantly higher than we are now near the bottom. But we knew that. That's not surprising. What we've talked about is changing the trend and working hard to do that. 
So instead of looking at every line, do me the favor and look at the orange and the green line. Orange is fall of 14, green is fall of 15. So in 2015, I'm going to holler for a minute. In 2015, when we were here, we were, oops, wait, hang on. Anyway, in 2015, we were here one week before classes start, right? And in 2015, we were sitting on that green line going, wow, we have a really big gap from where we were in 14. That's that 10% gap that we've talked about. The next year, last year, in fall of 16, we were on the pink line. And we were saying, oh, about a week before classes start, well, we're still down a bit but we're a heck of a lot closer than we were, and we lost about 4%. You know that our goal with all those budget adjustments was to make us feel secure and have the resources that we need provided that enrollment stays flat, meaning we lose no more enrollment this year. That has been quite a battle, and we're not done because there are months to come, but I'd like to point out where we are today. We are the red line. The red line is directly on top of the pink line. The pink line is fall of 16. We are fall of 17. We are flat or slightly ahead. We are flat. That's an all hands on deck effort. I'm not saying we put it in the bank. Enrollment is fickle. It changes. Even if we dip again, we know we can do it and I trust that we are in a whole lot better situation. So this is not the time to lay down and as Paul's email say, become complacent. He'd say wear registration red, right? So I'll wear your red over here. And please make sure that you're doing everything you can to keep students in classes, help them enroll, navigate things. This is what we want to accomplish. It gets frustrating to people when we think of enrollment because people say, well, it's just numbers. All they care is about numbers. But that's not true. Enrollment has, is important because it brings us revenue and resources. Because you want to do the coolest things I've ever heard. And those, that revenue allows you to do that for students. That's why we need the resource. It's not about the numbers. It's about what you want to do for students. And I put a picture of Emily and Gary up there because I think I shared with you, I had a, um, a colleague who once said, behind every FYE is a name, behind every name, is a story. So every FIE is a person, and that's why we focus on enrollment. So that is good stuff. Okay, so oh, there it is. That's that red line. Okay, <laughs> better late than never. You know, the last thing we've been focusing on is this elusive concept of uh, student success. And there are a million ways to measure them, measure it, none of which to me are very satisfying. But I will tell you that this, these are the data that the system office tracks. And student success is not only important to us, but it is part of our funding formula. So it's important. And um, it is a little dissatisfying because this is a fairly good metric in that it, it, it understands that students come to us for a lot of reasons. And being successful might mean that you're still enrolled, so you've persisted. It might mean that you've transferred. It might mean that you've completed. It, it looks at all of those, which I think is good. Unfortunately, this metric only looks at full-time students, which is half of our students, so I don't like that very much, and only first-time in college students, which, hmm, again, is even smaller. So it's not perfect. But I do think we can take a look at it and see something very clearly, two things. First is, these are cohorts of students. So it asks the question that students who come in in fall 15, what percentage of them are still here? transferred or completed by fall of 17. You'll notice there is no fall of 17 data because we're not there yet, so it's delayed. It's really hard to use this to assess, are we making a difference? The other thing that you can learn from this is, for the last 10 years, Central Lakes College has had about the same number. About 68% of our students, full-time, first-time students, complete, transfer, or persist. It's a very hard metric to move. I will tell you the good news is we're moving it a bit now. The bad news is that we can do a whole lot better. I'm not going to tell you we're in the top two-thirds of um, the colleges. We're not. So we've got room 
to move it. And we can definitely do better than this. The gold line is the goal that's been set for us. So that's kind of just the frame. We've been working on student success for a long time. The question is, are we moving it now? So I asked Wendy, because she had nothing else going on, if she could help me look at some data about, are we making a difference in this past year? You know, we've really changed some things. What's happening in the past year? Well, we started in the fall of 16, and we'd like to look at the fall of 17, but we're not done enrolling the fall of 17. So we decided to take a very short-term look. Look at fall 16 to spring of 17, and the fall, previous fall to spring retentions, and see if we're making any difference. So she did that. This is all students. Everybody who's enrolled, very, very broad question. If the students who came in fall of, fall of 14, what percentage of them were still here the next spring? About 67%. Of those students who came in a fall of 15, what percentage were he still here in spring of 16? Well, better, 69%. But last year, the students who came in in fall of 16 73% were still here the next spring. You are making a difference. Now, this is to be cautionally, we have to interpret it with caution because the real metric is fall to fall and completion, but it's a really good indicator that all that work is making a difference. We then had the question, well, well, who are these students that are sticking around? So I mentioned to you earlier there's a big difference between full-time and part-time students, so Again, Wendy was eating bonbons, so I said, could you do this? So she looked at full-time versus part-time students, and you see a couple of things here. Full-time students nationally in Minnesota State and at Central Lakes College are far more likely to retain, 83 to 84%. It's a very steady number. They stick around, and some would surmise it's because they're not juggling as many things, and they have additional resources, and we can all think about why that may be the case. That's a high number. And it ranks very high in Minnesota State. But our overall retention is low. So where's that coming from? Our part-time students. In fall of 14, only 43% of the students who started in that fall were still here in the spring. That's a low number. And that's the number that we, I think those are the people we identify with. Those are the ones that have tremendous challenges. Those are the ones that stop out and come back and worry about how to juggle their lives. So the question is, are we making a difference? Yes, we are. Last year, of those students who came in a fall of 16, the part-time students, 56% of them were back in the spring. Is that enough? No. But boy, is that moving in the right direction. A huge gain in part-time students. That's what we need to see. And then finally, we were really interested in what about our students of color and our American Indian students? We want to make sure that we have the ability for everyone to be successful. This is also a metric tracked by Minnesota State. And historically, students of color and American Indian students perform, retain, persist, transfer at a much, much lower rate. We believe in diversity. We need to make sure that they have the same opportunity. So, you know, Wendy produced this data. And this, to me, is some of the most exciting, again, cautiously interpreted. What it tells us is that as recently as fall of 14, there was a huge achievement gap. Just looking at the simplest metric, how, what percentage of them came back in the spring, our Caucasian students, 69% of them came back, all in total. But if you look at our students of color, and this one does include American Indian students, 56% of them came back. Not great. This college has emphasized diversity for years. So this gap started to close last year. In fall of 15, 69% of the white students came back, 68 of students of color. And this year, just that little metric, fall to spring, both came back at the same level, 73%. This is huge. You have to give yourself a round of applause. That's right. <laughs> so all that work pans out. Now, again, are we just going to say, ah, we're done. <laughs> we're good. We're done. We're going to put it all to bed now. Of course not. But I do think it's important to say we have tremendous strength and all that you've put into this is making a tremendous difference. So as we look forward, we have a lot to think about. Even though there's tremendous things to celebrate, we have a great deal to do. I mean, we have tremendous work ahead of us. I know that all of us in the past week have been thinking about the events that happened in Charlottesville, Virginia. My heart really goes out to that community, to Heather Hires who lost her life, and to everyone who was injured or otherwise impacted. 
you know, we watched that unfold, and it was just, just horrific. I'm not sure that I ever told you that my family lived 30 minutes from Charlottesville for seven years. It's a great community. It really is. And it's really easy to say, well, that's Charlottesville. That's Columbine. That's that community. That's not us. But the truth is that can and has and will happen in many, many places. It could have just as easily happened here. And if we're going to create the culture that we've been talking about, that culture of inclusion and respect where everyone feels valued, we absolutely have to embrace inclusion in all of its forms. We must make sure that all people feel welcome and safe, regardless of race, color, creed, ethnicity, sexual orientation, perspective in the world, and the list goes on and on. But we also have to appreciate, understand that we all don't think the same way. We all have different perspectives, and we have to make sure that we don't have to agree. If we had to agree, then we might as well quit now. We're not going to agree. But it's a wonderful thing to have different perspectives, and we have to create the environment where you all and all of your students can express those in a safe and respectful way. That's what we have to accomplish. And that means that we must, as a college, condemn all forms of racism, discrimination, white supremacy, hatred in any form. There is no option. And it also means that we have to be truly united. This is the group to make that happen and diligent, listening to each other and listening to our students. It's really easy to say, oh, I have to do something about that when something happens like happened in Charlottesville. Of course you have to do something about that. But many acts of hatred and racism are small, and they kind of fly under the radar, and people just say, well, that's, you know, I'm not going to do anything about that. We have to bring these to the attention of the college so that we can decide how to deal with them. That's how we change the culture. If we're going to create the culture that we want, there is no option, and I promise you, we are going to create that culture together. Okay? We are. So as we look forward, if that's not enough, we've got plenty to do. We're going to keep working on our pyramid, building the culture from the bottom, and working really hard on student success. I am ever more sure that this is the right team to do it. Um, I probably should stop saying how wonderful you guys are, because again, you'll probably be getting other jobs. But we are also going to engage in some strategic planning. Now, I say strategic planning, and you go, strategic planning. This is exciting strategic planning. And it's exciting because if you how many of you have ever been involved in strategic planning? Okay, I see the enthusiasm. Yep, I have. Sometimes, and whether that's here or elsewhere, strategic plans, there's a lot of conversation, a lot of wordsmithing, and then you end up with this great plan that sits on a shelf. And you go, whew, that's great. See you in three to five years, right? We don't want that kind of strategic plan. What's the point? We want a plan that is clear that we have a strong mission, which we already have, that our values reflect this culture we've been talking about. And tomorrow we're going to brainstorm about what our vision is going to be, what our promise to our students will be. So that's part of our plan. And we have a great committee that's going to help lead us through that. And they are then going to develop a handful of big, broad, strategic directions that will be our roadmap from our mission to our vision, our future, where we want to go. It'll be one page so that everyone can know what the heck it is. It'll be on the website so when you forget, you know exactly where to go. And there'll be nothing to put on a shelf. It'll be meaningful to us. And even though there's a committee, you have a lot of work to do in this. You're going to get feedback. You're going to be asked for feedback. And you have a choice. You can go, hm, I have none. Or you can do what I know that you can do and give feedback. Because trust me, you have very strong ideas. And that is a very good thing. So very cool strategic planning. And Come to the session tomorrow to learn more about it. We are also going to continue our work to strengthen our current programs. We will be engaging in a sort of academic analysis approach. Joy is going to talk a little bit more about it. It will be collaborative, collegial, with the goal of helping to determine what our current wonderful programs need. We are also developing a strategy to develop new programs. We have to develop new programs. And we will be gathering information, and Joy will develop um, a strategy for that. And it's going to happen soon. So that's exciting. 
We're going to be focusing more and more on our, st our strategic approach to enrollment management in many of the ways that I've already talked about. Recruitment has changed the way we develop our prospective students, and it will continue to change. We're going to continue to shift marketing dollars toward programs. Last year, two years ago, Ken, about 10% of our, your budget went to program-specific marketing, I think you told me. Last year, it was 35%. This coming year, it's 50%. We have to tell people about all these amazing programs, and we will do that. And we're going to take a very proactive approach to college in the schools, a very important program that will always be part of Central Lakes College. But we all know that there are challenges and we know that our funding formula is changing with CIS, and we can't just wait for it to happen. We have to do, look at some really um, very poignant, poignant data and come up with a strategic approach to college and the schools. So we will do that as well. We're going to focus on revenue. We've got Tara, who is wherever Tara is, responsible for this lovely campus. There Tara is, and grants. And she's going to be having some conversations with you, forums, to say, how could we do this grant thing? And, what should it look like and what do you need? And she's going to develop a strategy. And Becca, there's Becca in the back, who's going to continue her work with a great team on customized training. These will become significant revenue streams. And our CT, or customized training, will be a collaborative approach with Central Lakes College, M State, I'm thinking, which is why I'm looking off into the distance, Northland, and Moorhead. So a collaborative approach to customized training. Finally, we'll be continuing to work with HLC because I'm sure they'll have some suggestions for us and we'll all need you to show them how wonderful we are. And finally, we'll continue to advocate for legislative support. The legislature, of course, we didn't get exactly what we asked for this year, but we got additional dollars to our base and we're very grateful for that. This year, we're focused on bonding, both in capital improvements and um, our, we call it HEPR. Does everyone know it's HEPR? Or am I the only one that doesn't know it's HEPR? HEPR, Higher Education Asset Preservation Renewal. Look at that. I don't know. It's a good thing I have some in the corner. So this is the fund that we ask the legislators for to help us take care of what we have, new roofs, air handlers. So even tomorrow, we have a whole bunch of legislators, legislators coming because we have nothing else going on to get a tour of all of those requests so that we can, they can see at least where the roofs are. We're not going up. We'll stay <laughs> underneath. And they can understand the importance. We're also asking for dollars to conduct a planning study to improve the Brainerd campus, Central Core, how we approach student services and academic support. If we get those dollars, it's close to a half a million, then we will begin to pull everyone together who could possibly be involved and come up with a project that works for the college and to improve that campus so it looks just as beautiful as this one. That's right, it does look beautiful. So, you know, last but not least, because I'm uh, eight minutes over my time, sorry, um, I've been thinking a lot about, you know, a lot of people ask me, they call me and say, so how's it going over there? And I'm saying, well, it's just great. That's what I always say, it's just great. doesn't matter what day it is, it's wonderful. But it really is. And I've spent a lot of time talking and thinking about people. You have all really contributed to my life, this college, and this family, my family. You've embraced our family, and I'm very grateful for that. And you've made me feel like I belong here. Something as simple as when I sent the email saying I was going to the North Shore, I got a whole bunch of responses. Alita, thank you for Betty's Pies. Still working off those calories. Ryan told us, where's Ryan, about Palisade Head. My husband would go nowhere near that edge. But I am still in awe. You know, those things make us feel connected. It's what makes our students feel connected when you care enough to interact with them individually. So when I look at what's really important, it's the people. But it's not just the people. It's the connections we make. And when you look at the images, I'm just going to put up a bunch of images. These are just images that have been posted on social media or they've been on Facebook or you've seen a lot of places. Every one of these images are interactions or connections between you working with each other, our students, our students working with business and industry. This is what makes this college special. It's not just the people. It's the connections, the quality and the quantity of those connections. And this is the power of Central Lakes College. It's the reason that I feel very, very proud to be here every single day. And it's the reason it's really hard to explain why. 
It's because of this. Uh, Bill, you looked really crazy in that boat, by the way, wherever you are. And so, <laughs> so did Paul. It's the reason I am unbelievably proud, whether you're talking about athletics or not, to be a CLC Raider. And I know you all are. We're going to have a great year. Thank you very much. I think Jana is next up, and with any luck, there's her first slide. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I just want to give a shout out to food service again. I had a couple of you say, this is the best breakfast we've ever had at this event. Anybody else agree? Good. Thanks to Amy. Where's Amy? Amy ordered this all up for us this morning, so we appreciate that we got here and we're fed and we had coffee. That's the most important thing. Oh boy, which one of these clickers does the job? Okay, thank you. There's a lot of technology up here that is not my strong suit. <laughs> so I am with Hera in that being at this event last year was my first time to meet a lot of you. And it's been such a great year. Thank you for making me feel so welcome. It's really fun to look out now and there's really only a handful of folks who I haven't had the chance to connect with this year. And that's really exciting because I felt like I didn't know many of you at all last year. So thank you very much. You've all been very welcoming. You've welcomed me into your program areas. You've come down to our office to tell me about what you do at the college, and I appreciate that. Um, we're kind of, you know, over on that east end of the building at the Brainerd campus, so we're kind of off the beaten path, but we get, we get some traffic in that door. We get a lot of students coming in that door, and they stop in and talk to us about scholarships and random acts of kindness and student housing, and so it's just, it's a nice spot to be right by the door to get to interact. So don't forget about us over there. Come over and visit. We'd love to have you. Um, I'm going to start off just by, I'm not going to read this to you, but we had a significant change in the mission statement of the foundation last year. Um, you can see that we're all about removing barriers for students at the foundation. That's what we do. So we've done that through scholarships. We've done that through connecting with alumni and connecting with donors through the years. But a big thing that we did this year is student housing, right? So as you know, the foundation almost a year ago purchased the Pines Apartments. We changed the name to Parkway Apartments. We've done some improvements to safety and security over there. That's been our first priority is the safety and the security of our students. And now we are going to tackle some things over the next three to five years to make that building look even better too. I'm excited to tell you that our capacity is 118 students over there for us. We have about 115 students locked and loaded and ready to get in there this weekend if they're not in already. So that's very exciting. Uh-oh. There we go. Perfect. So student housing, at a glance, that's a big part of what we've been up to. Really, if I, if I had a wordle before about what the foundation has done this year, that student housing word would be really, really big for us. So, but it's a big deal and it's exciting. We're glad to have been able to do it. A lot of you contributed to that by participating in conversations and I thank you for that. Scholarships is also, of course, what the foundation is best known for. Um, this last year, this last academic year, we awarded 500 scholarships that totaled over a quarter of a million dollars to our students. So we're very happy and pleased to have done that. Uh, we also worked with the team. I work with Nick and Mike and Charles and Josh and Amy to administer our DASH and our RAC assistance. And we know that's for our students who are struggling in some way. We know they face a lot of barriers. We were able to work with 50 students last year. I wish that could have been, you know, 4,050 students that we could have worked with through RAC. But at least it's chipping away just a little bit for some students who, who we find who are struggling. And we really, um, Nick Heiser sent out a nice update at the end of the academic year. It really did help those students. Those students persisted and completed at a higher rate than our baseline students. So it makes a difference. In a few minutes here, I'm going to talk just a little bit about those of you who have contributed to the foundation over this past year and over the years. A lot of you contribute your dollars to that Random Acts of Kindness Fund, and I thank you for that because it truly does make a difference for our students. Amy and I had a student in our office at um, the and one of the semesters last year who was in tears. His mom had passed away. He needed to get back for the funeral, you know, so we were able to help with those kinds of things. So thank you for helping us do that. We couldn't do it without you. 
And we raised a little bit of money at the foundation last year. You know, we raised money for scholarships, for projects, and for programs. And we're thrilled. I don't know if you know, but we raised $676,000 at the foundation last year. That was a good year for us. It's a good year. Thank you. And it's because you do the work that you do. It's, it's an easy sell. You know, people sometimes say to me, how can you beg people for money for a living? I say, that's not what I do. I brag about what you guys do to people who have means and have passion to give, and I just help them figure out why we are the best investment for them. So it's you guys that makes my job really easy. Anybody tired of hearing from me yet on the night out? <laughs> no? Good. Because you'll probably get at least one more email from me about it. Just touch on the event really quickly. We've sold almost 200 tickets to the event. It's really exciting. Again, I have to say thank you to you all. I put out the plea and said, please come to our event. I even gave you half price tickets, hoping maybe 20 or 30 people would bite. You guys have uh, bought 100 tickets of those 200 sold. Thank you. So I'm excited to, to hang out with you all next year, or next year, next week. I wish it was next year. <laughs> That's how much work it feels like Amy and I still have to do for the event, as I wish it was a year away. Um, you know, we thought it'd be a great idea to kick off our academic year with an event. And I think it will be a great idea come next Thursday night. But, um, you know, if Amy and I look a little glassy-eyed over the next week, that's why. But thank you, seriously, for buying the tickets, for donating the items. We are going to have a great silent auction. If you can't be there, one of my emails that I will still send out is going to tell you how you can, from home or wherever you are, you can bid on this thing. Um, all of our auction items will go live online next week, and you can sit from the comfort of your own living room if you, if you are not able to make it to the event, and you can support the foundation by buying auction items from your home. So please do that. I can't even tell you all the great stuff we have going on at the event, so please come out and check it out. Eric Hepner and some students will be there with a photo booth. There's going to be wine tasting, beer tasting, graphic design is going to be there selling amazing items. We're going to brag about what you guys do, so... Um, and you all who can make it there, it just makes it easier for me. When someone asks me a question, I can say, well, I don't really know the question to that, but let me introduce you to Kari, you know, and, and she can answer that for you. So thanks for supporting the event. Now, for employee giving, I throw some student quotes up here to let you guys know that what you do makes a difference to our students. So thank you for giving. This next slide, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brag a little bit or give kudos to those of you who give. That's a great list of folks. You may or may not be able to see it from where you're at. Um, I just want to say thank you to all of you for giving. And I, I will apologize if there's any omissions on this list. Please let us know. We want to get you on this list. It was unintentional if we missed anybody. Um, a lot of you, a lot of folks on this list give via payroll deduction. Easy way to give. You really kind of never miss it. Some people give 2 bucks a paycheck. Some people give 10 or $20 a paycheck. Every little gift size adds up over the year and makes a difference for our students. You can pick where you give. You can tell me, Jan, I wanted to go to Random Acts of Kindness. You can tell me that you wanted to go to a specific program fund. You can start your own fund if you want to for something that you're passionate about, a scholarship area that you care about, and you can contribute to that fund and we can set up criteria. So there's a lot of options for how to give and we try and make it really easy. Later today, once we get back to our office, we're going to send out that payroll deduction form for anybody who wants to start a new payroll deduction or wants to change where their gift is directed or how much or anything like that. So I would love for next year for me to show this slide and to have to put it on two slides because more people join us in giving to our students. Um, the, the folks that are listed in bold are new givers in the last year. And I have to give a shout out, Martha doesn't know I'm doing this, but Martha more than doubled her gift last year. So I put her in red up there. Thought that was really neat. So thanks, Martha. Thanks to all of you. Give yourselves a round of applause. And a lot of, and oh, I should say too, maybe payroll deduction isn't your way to give. People can give in lots of other ways. And please know if, if, if it's not the right time for you to give, we understand that. You're giving to the foundation and to the college in other ways. So I just, I throw these folks up here just to, to say thank you and give them some extra kudos. So what did that add up to last year? Almost $10,000. That's really exciting. Those $2 and $5 and $6 every other week, that adds up really fast, you guys. But again, what could we do next year? Could we get up to 15? Could we double that number? Who knows? So if you have any questions about giving to the foundation and where it goes and how it helps our students, I would love to talk to you today about that. 
Um, so just let me know. In the coming year, there's a lot. Who knows? We bought an apartment building last year, so who knows what might come up this year. But just know that we are your foundation. We have, you know, limitations. There's two of us at the foundation. And we have a board of directors who sets our mission and, and sets our scope of work. But hey, let's dream together. I love it when people stop by and say, hey, Jan, I've got an idea. Some of you in this room have done that. Sometimes we've been able to work on those ideas, and sometimes we have to put it on the back burner, or I have to bring it back to my board and, and give them some time to think about it. But please do. Stop in. Let's dream together. Um, look for that payroll deduction form. Eat some more breakfast because there's still some food there. And please, if you haven't had a chance yet to, to check out uh, what we have going on with our, our event, check it out, please. So that's what I have for today. Thank you. Who gets to come up next? Oh, here comes Ken. Just a second to get my technology ready. I was say talk, <coughs> talk amongst yourselves, but then I'd probably never get you back, so <coughs> but you don't have to be that quiet. Messing up with the messing with the microphone doesn't uh, do anything detrimental to our people out in TV land. Okay, that's me. Hi, I'm Ken, the marketing guy. Um, as I was getting ready for the presentation, um, kind of dawned on me last night. I was probably procrastinated, but. I, I, say thank you for Joy and for Hera for having me today. And, I, and with that invite, I think I've been up here for the last three years, and I got to thinking last night while I was working on my presentation that the interest in the marketing guy somewhat is tied to enrollment. So, um, and, and we already saw some great enrollment slides. So, and again, as marketing guy, I don't want to dwell in enrollment uh, what it was in 2009, 2013, because that, that doesn't sound very good right now, because we're, we are flat, or about flat, which again is great, and I, you know, we've had a lot of obstacles, but what I wanted to bring up was, this is kind of the, um, probably, it, you could say it is the interest in the marketing guy level. When employment rates, you can see in 2000, unemployment rates in 2009 through 2013, were really sky high. I don't think I was invited to this event for a number of years, so I, I, I didn't make it here. So then the last three years, I've been invited to the event because you can see by the unemployment rates, they are really at some historical lows right now, and they're heading even further down. So I just thought it was interesting for no other reason than to show you that and to say that's our barometer of interest in the marketing guy. So with that, uh, but on a more positive note, um, just did these numbers over the summer. Uh, I've been getting the Brainerd High School, uh, they do a survey each year for their graduating seniors that are seniors and what their intent is after uh, high school. And we've been, I've been getting this survey for at least 15 years, maybe even beyond. So what I did, and I don't know if you can see it over there, but, um, and I can get out of the way, but for 15 years, been doing the survey, and if you can see what I'd point out here, because I know I only got 15 minutes for this whole presentation, and I won't go, this will probably be the worst number thing you have to look at during my whole show here. But if you look at the Central Lakes College, so uh, in 2017 on their survey, we saw a big jump from 2016, about 8% jump in Brainerd High School students intending to come to Central Lakes College. So that is really, really great. Because if you see the historic numbers, we're in a pretty good place. The only uh, time that we were beat on that was in 2013. Uh, and again, if you remember that last slide about the barometer of how interested people are in the marketing guy, 2013, we're still at pretty high unemployment rates and the recession you know, was bad. So uh, this is a good sign that we're, I mean, when you think about it, for students intending to go to college, we're almost pulling 
four out of 10 Brainerd High School graduates into Central Lakes College. And I've talked to a lot of my colleagues that have uh, campuses, hometown campuses and high schools. That is a really big number. That is a good number. And it's based on everybody here and everybody out there in TV land back at the campus. So you can give yourself a round of applause for that, since that seems to be the thing to do here. So. OK, I lied. Last, uh, <laughs> last slide was had a lot of numbers. This one's probably even uglier. Um, I'm not going to go into this much, because I don't think you're giving me two hours to do this. I just put this up there. This is our last year's budget and marketing plan, really the advertising plan, and where we are spending money and when we are spending money. Um, I bring this up because we're still working on this. This is last year's plan. The plan we have is an ever-moving, ever-breathing document. Uh, there's going to be some changes here because we want to infuse more billboards into uh, the new marketing plan, so we're going to be shuffling things around. So I bring this up because this fall, probably September, I'm going to have uh, some open forums because, again, we want to make sure we're doing what we need to do to make sure we reach the people we need to reach. So I'll be having uh, forums on both campuses to discuss the details of the current marketing plan. And again, it's changing. So if you have ideas, you'll get more information uh, about this. I'll invite everybody that wants to participate and look at cool slides like this in more detail. And I will have more detail for you if you want it. So. With that, um, Hera mentioned, did a great job of uh, plugging program marketing. And as Hera did mention, we are spending more money than ever before on really program-specific marketing. Um, and we're doing that in, in kind of three major ways. We're really heavy into the digital space. So we have a lot of ads running uh, to drive traffic. Digital ads driving traffic to our front door to the telephone and to our website. Uh, example of that in some of the digital ads we've been running through Spectrum Reach, uh, we've had during the last year 6,000 people hit our website based on those digital ads. And that's just click throughs to our website. We're also getting phone calls and we're also getting people coming to our door. So that's great. Uh, the other thing we started doing, I don't know if people have noticed billboards uh, that we've got up on Highway 10 near St. Cloud. We're going to be doing more of this and uh, social media ads. And really, what has made a lot of what we can do with program advertising possible is the fact that now in digital space, we can really carve out th you know, programs and put program-specific messages out there. In the past, we were locked into more major media, and we really couldn't do that. Also, with billboards, uh, now with the invention of the digital billboard, which I'll show you a couple slides here in a sec, uh, with digital billboards, we don't have to just put up one big kind of institutional branded message. We can get into program specific message. And of course, with social media ads, uh, we can tailor those nonstop, pick out demographic targets on, for the program, and I'll show you those in a little bit too. So I don't have everybody's program up here. We'll try to cycle everybody through, so we'll get, we'll get to you. But I just want to show you some of the ads we have up there. And hopefully Gay's happy about this, because she's been one of the bigger billboard proponents of all time. So thank you. So we made sure we got you up. Um, nursing careers, robotics. I like this one. I don't know if uh, Bill and Kent agree with me, but I just think fish sell in Minnesota. So that <laughs> I love the fish. So if people are going back from their lake cabin, going on Highway 10 in St. Cloud, this is what they'll see. And uh, heavy equipment, diesel and heavy equipment careers. And you know we want to make sure, too, biggest program we have, four-year transfer AA degree. So we want to make sure we're getting that out there. Um, I talked a little bit about social media as one of our uh, pieces that we're going into, program marketing. We've started in the spring doing ads, uh, program ads, and we'll keep doing program ads, and really we're going to up that uh, particular uh, endeavor. Uh, so we're doing ads where we put ads uh, on Facebook. And one thing I can say now about Facebook, I was just talking to somebody the other day, uh, through the help of Jesse, has done a great job with managing our social media, all our social media platforms. But with uh, Facebook, I mean, we're almost at 8,000 likes, which puts us 
at or near the top of all community colleges in Minnesota, and we're actually starting to surpass uh, some of our state universities. So we built, the, and this, it's cool to have the likes, but with the, with, what is really the value of the likes is having that big network. As that network continues to snowball, those ads that we're doing now just get to a bigger audience. Any posts we put out there are getting to a bigger audience, and that is just spreading and spreading and spreading. So now we started doing short-term uh, kind of programmatic ads on Facebook, and we can see through the analytics it is driving traffic to our website, and we're getting lots of hits on our website because of these. There's another one we did. This was one of our most successful ones we did over the summer for robotics. <laughs> okay. And, I, and that maybe. What did you say? Did you say you're full? Okay. Good. That's good. And I'd like to take credit, but I'll give Nate the credit for that. Uh, but these things are effective. Uh, I think in this particular campaign, we ran the robotics ad for two weeks, and we got 50 hits to our website in just two weeks. So that was amazing. Um, my presentation's a little just disjointed, but I'm going to cover a lot of ground in a short period of time. So as uh, Hera also mentioned, uh, we're going to be talking more about defining the CLC experience uh, a little bit more tomorrow with strategic planning. But with that, I just want to bring it up and show you something today and get you thinking a little bit. Uh, just to go through it very quickly, uh, I think it was last December we started this process trying to define who we are. Because in marketing, we're trying to figure out what's the message that's going to relate and really be the message that we can all get behind that really helps present our college in the best possible way. And we have a lot of different things going on, and, that, and that's a great thing, but it's kind of tough at times to bring that all into one kind of central theme. So we really didn't know where this was going to go, so we did focus groups at the campuses. We did focus group last January during the, the duty day events. We did surveys for staff and faculty online, and we also had groups of students meet, and we uh, did a student survey, and we really got good participation. So after all of that, Hera showed you the word cloud for the staff and faculty. I've got the word clouds coming up side by side. Yes, this sounds like I'm trying to be epic here or something that we're waiting for this moment to come. But I thought this was really cool. So as a marketing guy, I get jazzed up about this stuff because you get all this research information, you, you got to compile it, you put it in the word cloud, and bam, it just hits you. So students on the left, staff and faculty on the right. But I think this is really amazing what staff and faculty said, but even more amazing what students are saying about us. That they didn't pick out anything like tangible stuff like this is great or that is great. It's more of how we do our business here. And then that does reach everything we do. So this is going to be really cool to use because if you look at some of those things, like friendly just jumps out at you. And that, again, is a testament to what everybody does here and how they do it. But I mean, if you, if you have really good eyes, there's probably some words that aren't so flattering. But those are probably like one-offs. But you know, the, of course, the more times somebody said something, the bigger the word is. So you don't really have to say much more of that, about that, because I really think that that is a great way in it, of looking at Central Lakes College through both the eyes of students and staff and faculty. So you can applaud that. OK, uh, like I said, disjointed and random. Um, over the summer, we wanted to update West Bank Journal. I think I got a picture of that here. Um, so we put Paul Bunyan on it. Just and if anybody knows Jesse, our social media genius, Jesse loves Paul Bunyan. So, you know, I threw her a bone and said, okay, we can put Paul Bunyan on the West Bank Journal. So we got talking more about it and thinking, you know, the Paul Bunyan thing is kind of really big in our region. Um, people know us for that. People come up to the area for that. There's statues of Paul Bunyan and Babe all over our region. So we thought, um, you know, maybe we could start embracing that a little bit. And the idea first sounded sort of crazy, but uh, I'll bring it back to that one. 
But then the more we started talking to people about it, um, and I won't go into tremendous detail on that either because I'm behind in time, but we want to do a little bit more partnership going forward with Paul Bunyan and Babe. We've had focus groups over the last summer with students. They like the idea. We've had some, of, some people in here maybe have attended focus groups of staff and faculty. Um, everybody's really given us a thumbs up that it's an interesting way to go. So we don't know everywhere this will go yet. Um, one of, I don't know if it's my idea, if it wasn't, I'm stealing somebody else's idea and making it mine because that's what we do in marketing. But, uh, you know, we got thinking of crazy ideas like I look at Jeff over there about, you know, people come to see Paul Bunyan attractions. Could we build like a pond, uh, you know, at the campuses that would be in the shape of Paul Bunyan's footprint and be the biggest water footprint uh, that anybody could come and see? I don't know. There's, there's ideas out there. So, um, so we don't know where it's going to go yet, uh, but we will be kind of partnering with Paul Bunyan. Was this drawn by a student? Excellent question. This was drawn by uh, Kira Moses, who was in the graphic design program, and we've kind of uh, contracted her to do some Paul Bunyan drawings for us. As you notice, she's uh, hipped up Paul Bunyan. Uh, <laughs> Paul Bunyan looks more like a college student. Uh, maybe he'll throw a backpack on, it, on him or a, a skull cap or something like that. Um, but his hair is lighter. He looks friendly. Babe is really friendly. So we just think it's a positive thing. And, you know, we do so many great things around here, big, big, big things. So and sometimes it's hard for us to really sell big well. And who does that better than Paul Bunyan? So with that, more to come on that. Yes? I just want to piggyback on Ken's comment about student focus. We have a really active student education program here. Um, Jeff will also head it in the next year. He's kind of off to his college and not going back to school out. So, and the, our students just love it. They're way different students than our way. There's some differences on there, but we have like <clears throat> Leanne was a plant in the op, uh, in the audience, so I couldn't have done a better job myself <laughs> doing that. So, so that appreciated. Thank you. Uh, again, on my randomness here, um, this is going totally different direction. We we discovered uh, last spring and early this summer about uh, 360 videos. So we started putting some 360 videos up uh, on various events, cow milking events, other things. Um, we got some ideas on how we could use this, but, you know, and, and maybe I'm just like a kid with a toy, but uh, I just, uh, well, let's see, is this working for me right now? Uh. And there's dead silence, okay. Get it to work, uh, not moving. If this was working well, this would be moving around the screen and it would look 360 and really cool. So just imagine that is happening right now. So, But I'm not going to take the time to mess around with it. But we are uh, experimenting with 360 videos, full 360 video. Uh, cool thing about it, besides just that it's 360 video, we're trying to figure out how we can use this uh, to sell the college. Um, but we can use it for events. Uh, we wanted to get it going for graduation because we thought giving uh, students a cool 360 experience during graduation would have been awesome. Couldn't quite light that up. Uh, but labs, classrooms, things that are going on, if you've got a cool thing going on, lab, classroom, to really show your program, uh, 
we can use 360 video for doing that and it works great on like iPhones and good Android phones that you can actually wherever you move the picture moves with you so you can be at home and kind of see a virtual tour of your lab facility whatever and uh, it's it's I think it's going to be really uh, big as we get into the future and people are using virtual reality and uh, 360. Other thing for doing uh, virtual building tours. Um, we just got our uh, CLC Brands uh, store revised. Now I'm going to see if uh, this technology is going to work for me. There, good. Um, we got our 360 store back online. We got a new link for it. If people have ordered things in the past, it was quite cumbersome for ordering. Um, this, it's been streamlined, so you just have to put in a credit card and it's very easy to do. We got some new apparel up there. I'm going to put the link on, uh, in the SharePoint site and I'll also send out a link to everybody. But it's uh, got a lot of apparel, it's all corporate apparel. Um, so all the colors are very well controlled, so you will not find a yellow Central Lakes College uh, sweater or anything like that up there. It's all branded in our colors. But you can check that out. We even got a tie available. And you can click on any one of these things if the internet is working and see the color selection, its size, everything's up there. Really uh, a lot of different garments up there in a lot of different sizes. And again, I'll put that information out to you. I don't have red shoes yet, but, <laughs> and if you do have other ideas, we're really open to, uh, to putting other suggestions up there. So if you think of things that you would like, we can go get them. And with that, uh, my last comment would be, before I say thank you for your attention, is uh, this is Hera's idea, because she's an idea person. She's got great ideas. Um, before, I got here pretty early, but there were people here, but then I had to be sneaky about putting my business cards under five chairs in this room. So if you have and find a business card under your, it's taped onto the bottom of five chairs, when we get to the first break, come and see me, and you, you have won a prize. Thank you, and have a great day. So all right, we'll uh, keep moving along as uh, Ken took up most of our time this morning. <laughs> uh, did you have a question? Okay. So I get to do one of the fun jobs this morning and I'm going to be introducing to you our new employees hired uh, for CLC this past summer. I'm going to start with our new administrators and first off I'd like to introduce Joy Bodine our new Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs. And please stand if you're here. Welcome, Joy. Uh, Rebecca Kent has uh, lost her interim status and is now joining us as our Dean of CTE Brainerd Campus and Customized Training. Welcome, Becca. Uh, and then I'm going to go through a few who were hired over last spring semester and later on who didn't get the introductions last year. And I'll start with Nicholas Bickford. He's been hired as our CIS transfer coordinator. And if Nick is here, please stand. I would imagine he's probably back at the shop. Nathan, Nathan Coyer, new GMW. Welcome, Nate. Jeremy Goddard, print shop technician. Is Jeremy here? And that's a brand new position for Central Lakes. Ben Kent has been hired as our theater technician, uh, helping with our lighting and sound for the CLC theater. 
Joy Larson is joining us as our new security director. Joy. <laughs> Tamara Rick is our Hort technician for the Ag and Energy Center. Please stand, Tamara. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Mallory Sheik, our new disabilities coordinator. And I know Mallory was here. OK, I'll have her stand. <laughs> Kevin Stalwick, hired as our new GMW Brainerd campus, and Mitch Thorne, GMW, for the Staples campus. Mitch, are you here? Okay. I'd like to welcome back Sarah Jennison. Uh, Sarah will be rejoining CLC as our new practical nursing instructor. Welcome back, Sarah. We have some temporary full-time and temporary part-time adjunct faculty who have been hired. Joy Bridewell in nursing. Mark Lindquist. Mark will be our new guitar instructor for our music program. <laughs> Kyle McClure, English instructor. <laughs> Mallory, I saw you just would you please stand, our new disabilities coordinator. Welcome, Mallory. <laughs> Dennis Moon, machine trades instructor. <laughs> Ray Austin, softball head coach. <laughs> Chelsea Orne Ornelas, uh, assistant women's basketball. Nick Block, assistant men's basketball. Randy Swanhorst, assistant women's basketball. And then lastly, Jasmine Watkins, football assistant coach. And thank you for that. And I will also go over some changes that have happened in personnel over these last few months. Jody Longbella is now replacing Deb Wesp on the Brainerd campus as our president's assistant. And Jody will be working for both campuses um, and will also provide some support to Tara Carrolls on the Staples campus. And uh, welcome Jody to her new role. We're all appreciative <laughs> of her taking this on. <clears throat> Tiffany Holinsky, management analyst for our Ag and Energy Center. Barb Vilwak has moved to the cust as a customer service specialist intermediate to the information center in Brainerd. Amanda Small is currently in Susan Roaring's trio position, and she will be in that position temporarily into September. Susan Roaring has moved into the registrar position on a temporary basis uh, following Michelle Kangas's resignation. Tambura Top is our new recruiter, uh, newly hired, and she has uh, made that transition from the Rita Grant now to our admissions department as our new recruiter. Amanda Waite, dental lab assistant, has moved from temporary to uh, unlimited. Angie Gooderjohn, our college lab assistant last year in computer technology, is this year our computer technology instructor. And then we have Tara Carrolls, who's now become the dean of the Staples campus. and. Uh, Custom, or excuse me, grant writing. Uh, Tara has assumed her new role this July. Mary Sam is now our Dean of Students, Equity and Inclusion. She started in this new role July 1. Paul Premsberger has moved from our CIS, Secondary Relations uh, Coordinator, and is now our Dean of Enrollment Management and Student Success. And then lastly, Ajit has taken on a new role and he will be assuming uh, responsibilities for both safety and security on both campuses. So with that, I'd like to welcome all new employees and returning employees to CLC. <laughs> and for the HR update, I don't have technology to deal with this morning, and I'm going to be rather short and brief. Um, but you're going to see a number of changes in human resources this year. Uh, you're going to be transitioning to an HR director, a new HR director, beginning in January. I will be leaving uh, CLC in December. So that'll be one change, and there'll be more communication to come on that as we start discussing the search process uh, that will begin to replace my position. 
And then last academic year, um, you, you received communications from HR about some changes in how the campus services, at least on the HR end, would function within Minnesota State. It was decided that the HR transactional functions <clears throat> and later payroll would move to uh, regional hubs. Uh, CLC is part of a, the northern hub, and that hub is located in Virginia, Minnesota. And that transition uh, for the faculty transition or transactions was supposed to occur this fall semester. Uh, we didn't feel that uh, we had had enough communication with these new hubs and uh, didn't feel that we were in a good place uh, to make that transition for fall. So we have uh, communicated with the system office and we have made the decision that at least for Central Lakes College, our HR office will continue to process fall transactions, at least through uh, the beginning of fall semester. Um, <clears throat> we will continue to make the transition slowly to these hubs over fall semester, so you will see that faculty work moving uh, throughout the year. And that is not the only work that is going to be moving. Uh, following the faculty transactions, it will be the staff transactions that will move slowly to these regional hubs located in Virginia and around the state. And then finally, um, next fall, they're looking at moving our payroll services as well. So there's lots of transitions to come, uh, lots of changes that we're going to be seeing, particularly starting in the HR office. And so I just wanted to communicate that to you. You're gonna be receiving lots of information from HR over the semester on how that transaction is going to actually work for you and uh, how the communication is going to occur in the future. But this is a big change for our college. It's a big change for HR in particular. And so I would ask for your patience as we make some of these transitions. Um, and particularly right now, Cindy Foote is out on a three-week leave of absence for some uh, family issues that she's dealing with, um, nothing, you know, Serious, I, I just want to let you know that. Um, but I do ask for your patience while Cindy is gone and we try to uh, get all of this uh, moving. <clears throat> uh, the next phase will include, as I said, the staff transactions. And then by next fall, they're looking at October 2018 for that final move for payroll services. But um, again, it's been a pleasure working with you these uh, past 29 years. It's going to be very hard for me to leave. Um, but again, there'll be great things ahead for this college, uh, great things ahead, ahead for my staff in HR, um, just lots of transition and lots of change. And uh, with that, I would like to call up Kari Christensen, who will be our next presenter. Good morning need just a minute here to transition the technology, so. There we go. Can you see that okay? All right. Um, if I can get it a little bit bigger. Whoa, sorry. <laughs> There, we'll try that. All right. Well, good morning and welcome. It's always an exciting um, and busy time of year. Um, this is such a transition week, I think, you know, as we move from the busyness of summer to, you know, the, the start of, of fall semester, but always just very exciting. So it's good to see everyone. Um, I am just going to put this on the screen. I will email it out later, um, and it's also posted on SharePoint. Um, so um, I just want to give some brief updates. Um, there's Again, a lot of change, um, some things that are coming up that we just want to highlight. You'll get more information you know, as, as fall semester goes underway. I really have to start by saying um, thank you to the maintenance, bookstore, business office, safety and security staff um, for their work over the summer. You know, summer is an incredibly busy time um, and a lot of the changes you're hearing about today are the result of the work that they have done all summer long. So thank you to all of our administrative services staff for the great work that you've done um, to get ready for the start of fall semester. So, um, yes, thank you. 
Um, we again have some big changes coming up um, in terms of systems. Um, there will be a new e-procurement system um, coming up. It's called Marketplace. Um, I think the goal of, of Minnesota State is that it will look more like an Amazon type of shopping cart where there will be shopping lists and that type of thing that is coming down the pike. Um, we will go live with this system September 1st, but we're going to phase in slowly during fall semester. There will be multiple phases. We're going to start like with maintenance and IT and that type of thing. Um, and so um, this won't Im impact everyone right away, um, but we will be rolling out information um, throughout fall semester. Um, the e-procurement system is really going to tighten up a lot of our procedures and accountability. Um, as an example, you will not be able to process a purchase order if, the, if your budget is not sufficient to cover that. Where before we've been able to maybe do a force encumbrance, you know, for a short period of time until we get things figured out. Because the system is all automated, um, we will not be able to do that. So um, budget monitoring will be really important. Things like delegation of authority, um, where, you know, for a typical faculty member, um, you've got a $1,000 purchasing limit, so if you want to buy a, purchase, a, you know, a piece of equipment, it might you know, be larger than that. This will automatically route purchase orders to the appropriate people to get um, approvals. So if you enter you know, a requisition for something that's above your um, delegation of authority limit, it will go to your dean um, you know, for approval. So again, um, a lot of automation built in. Another piece that they've built in, which I find kind of interesting, um, it's a good thing. Um, if you're purchasing things like chemicals or hazardous materials, um, which again happens a lot in, in our departments, it's going to route to Ajit Yadav to review from a, a, a safety perspective. And so um, there's, there's going to be a lot of change with this system. Um, again, we will roll it out. It will come out you know, slowly um, during um, fall semester and we need to be fully implemented by the end of the academic year. So more information on that. Um, and we'll do some small group training sessions. I'm going to try to make up a little bit of time here. So I think Harris already mentioned we have a legislative bonding visit. Um, we are excited that our Brainerd Student Services and Academic Support Project made the Minnesota State list. We're number 16 on the list. I think we're fortunate to have a legislative visit tomorrow. Um, busy time, 11.45 to 12.15. We'll have a group of about 38 people is, is what we're assuming if the whole committee and Minnesota State folks come on campus. So they'll we'll be walking through the campus um, as we're all in in-service and doing lunch and, and whatnot. So please um, welcome them if you get that opportunity. And we'll share more about that project as it goes through. We are asking for planning money. Um, and so we should know by the end of the academic year um, at the, or at the end of the legislative session if we get the request for planning money. If we get the request for planning money, then that gives us some time to work with an architect, um, you know, revise our plans, get ready for construction documents, and then we would request the full construction documents in the 2020 legislative session. Um, we're also going to talk tomorrow about our HEPA projects. I know I've sent this out a number of times. We have three um, primary projects um, for HEPA, and that's the focus is really taking care of what we have. And that's always the number one priority for Minnesota State. If you look at the bonding list, HEPA, $130 million, taking care of what we have. It's our roofs, it's our boilers, it's HVAC, you know, all of those things. That is the number one priority for the system always. And so um, we will be sharing that with um, the legislators. We're looking at Brainerd Camp. Oh, sorry, I get started talking and I realize I'm not scrolling along, sorry. <laughs> you can tell I don't do this very often, can't you? Um, so we're looking at a roof um, and HVAC replacement um, over the multi-purpose room and weight room. Um, also Staples Campus boiler replacement, HVAC upgrades for Staples um, and West Campus. And then the other project is the West and roof replacement. So if you think about the Brainerd Campus, you know, that was built in 1995. It's our original roof. We've made some repairs to that, but that whole roof needs to get replaced. Um, it's reached the end of its useful life. So those are our three projects. Your support with area legislators and whatnot, um, as you see them in the community, you know, legislatively and that type of thing is really important. So we appreciate that. Um, safety and security transition. Um, 
Nancy mentioned this just a bit. Um, Ajit will now be Director of Safety and Security um, and, and work on that overall. And we've hired Joy Larson as our Security Coordinator. We're excited about um, her joining our team. Um, and has, she has a great background with the Brainerd Police Department and will be our primary contact for security working with our student security officers. The other thing we're gonna do is form some smaller um, emergency planning teams on the campus to really focus on individual campus needs. Um, we have an emergency operations team that's about 30, 35 people. And so we just really thought we'd, we'd work in a smaller group to identify specific campus needs and then bring it up to the emergency operations team in the college community. Food service updates. Um, Prairie Bay is with us for another three years at the Brainerd campus. Um, so we're excited about that change. Um, they did do some food service over the summer. And here in Staples, for the first time in many years, we have food service, which we're just absolutely thrilled about. Um, so um, we, we, the name um, is Cast Iron Grill. Um, I think Chris Anderson put out a call for names. Um, it's named after the former director of the Staples Technical Institute, Mike Matanich, um, who was very you know, instrumental um, in, in the college here in Staples. And so it's a nice connection there. I do have the contact information um, for um, our local manager here. One of the changes that we needed to make with food service this year um, is that Anytime you have an event on campus, we're using food service. Um, you know, historically we've given an option if the price was less than 20%, we could go outside. Um, it's getting harder and harder um, to sustain food service. Um, you know, as is shown here in Staples, it, it's been um, difficult to make it um, financially feasible to have food service. And so that's one of the changes that we're making. If, you, if you're using food service on campus for advisory committees and that type of thing, we are using the food service. The only time we would go out is if they would say that's not something that we can do. And really it goes to financial sustainability. Here in Staples, um, just so you know, there's, um, you know, there's kind of a guarantee of revenue and there are some financial implications for us if we don't get to those revenue options. So again, the, the fact that we can use them, you know, um, encourage your students to come down, come down and have lunch, uh, all of that is really appro appreciated and supports the sustainability. Let's see, um, Staples campus, there's some big changes. Um, Freshwater Education District is now located here at CLC. Um, they're actually in three locations here on campus. They're leasing about 8,000 square feet um, on an ongoing basis. We have a five-year lease. Um, they moved in June, um, early July. Um, Freshwater Ed District, our Carl Perkins Consortium, Early Childhood Family Education, Early Childhood um, Special Education, Vocational Rehab, Adult Basic Education, and their Area Learning Center are all housed here in Staples. So it helps fill the campus. There's just a vibrancy, you know, and um, it, it's, it's good to have them there. They're bringing in superintendents and principals. They've got a variety of community meetings that they're going to be having here on campus. They're thrilled to be here, and uh, we're thrilled to have them here as well. So if you get an opportunity to welcome them, um, we would appreciate that. A um, few facility updates over the summer. All of these things came through um, the academic pieces, all came through fiscal facilities last year. Graphic um, design has moved to the east end of the building, E417 and E419. Videography has come west um, and is located in W127, where graphic design was, um, and W141. Um, the classroom kind of across the way behind the, I call it the OSP classroom, um, is where welding had the majority of their courses. They're now upstairs in W215, um, located within the business division. And then Hort and Natural Resources are sharing um, W121, that former classroom since videography is in their space. I know I'm throwing a lot of room numbers around, but just want you to be aware that we've had some facility changes with these academic programs. And then Hera mentioned some of the student services changes um, and the renaming, so I will skip by that. Communication of budget decisions for fiscal 18, they've all been distributed, um, it was early August. So your operating budgets, equipment technology, um, all of that has gone out. Um, I, I've had some questions from people about their operating budgets. Um, a reminder, we took a quarter of a million dollars out of operating budgets. We did not do it across, uh, across the board, um, but we looked at budget requests and history and a variety of those things. Um, I have not gotten back to everyone that's asked questions about their operating budgets. I will do that here in the next few days. Um, but if you have questions on those, let me know. Um, and 
and it is 100%. Um, I've had some questions saying, is this 50% of our budget? I think, you know, um, and we did load 100% of the budgets, but remember that we had to make, um, as part of our overall budget plan, we had to make some of those reductions. Um, as Harris said too, um, we did a lot of work on budget last year. Um, the good news is that if enrollment holds flat, our budget is balanced this year. And you know, if our other assumptions hold true, contract settlements, enrollment, and that type of thing, um, you know, I think we're in a pretty good position for fiscal 19. Enrollment is really the key. Obviously, it was an operating budget cycle, so we know our state appropriation for fiscal 18 and 19. I won't go into all the nuances of how we got that state appropriation. It was sent to us a bit differently. It was front-loaded, so we've had, um, you know, we've had to set aside some of that new state appropriation from 18 to hold over for 19. Um, and I can explain that a little bit more um, in fiscal facilities and, and other, other forms as we move forward. We did have a 1% tuition increase. Um, that was allowed um, by the legislature um, and supported by the board. Basically, that gives, gets us back to the fiscal 16 rates. Because if you'll remember last year, we had a 1% um, tuition rollback. Did I say enrollment it's rather than tuition? We had a 1% tuition increase in fiscal 17. No, I'm getting that wrong. 1% increase for fiscal 18. Fiscal 17, we had a 1% rollback. So it really just brings us back to that fiscal 16 level. Um, we did have an opportunity to increase differential tuition, which is really important for a lot of our academic programs. Um, there is some specific language about how and under what circumstances we can increase differential tuition. We did um, increase above the percent in a, sp in a few specific areas. I really think that this needs to be a conversation we have between academic affairs um, and you know our faculty this upcoming year. Um, we haven't, our tuition has been frozen for a number of years, including differential. So I just um, want you to know that I anticipate we'll have some conversations about that coming up. Another really large change, um, the system we have for web accounting, ISRS, it's what does all of our student accounting, HR, payroll, um, the business office and whatnot. Minnesota State has a plan to replace that system. It's called NextGen ISRS. Um, the basis of, of all of that system is COBOL and it's outdated and it's, we're having trouble keeping it um, supported. So this has been on their um, project list for a while. We asked for some funding from the legislature and just got a small amount of the funding. Um, but it's a huge undertaking. And if you think at, you know, of all of our accounting, financial, and student records, um, the replacement of that system is huge for, for all of us. And so I was just asked last week to be on an advisory committee um, that will be working on um, that next gen um, process coming up. And I think one of the key things um, initially we're going to have to talk about is if we don't have all of the funding to support this transition, you know, what does that mean? Um, it's a question that I have because I know there's some campus responsibility for funding um, this next gen replacement as well as Minnesota State and legislative funding. Um, so that will be a, a big thing coming up. Lastly, I just wanted to share a few of my larger goals for the upcoming year. We're really working on integrating the work across the college, and so um, just wanted to share that as we go forward. And again, I forgot to scroll. Um, so um, as Hera talked about, um, we have our strategic plan um, committee of this upcoming year. Joy and I are co-chairing that, and we're excited about um, that opportunity. I was told many years ago that if you don't have a strategic plan, your budget is your plan because it's how you're allocating your resources, and it's re a reflection of the priorities of the institution. So having this um, focus for us is really key. We're also going to be working on a CIS cost study um, as we work through future funding changes um, that you know, Hera alluded to earlier. Obviously, we have our Brainerd Student Services um, project that's coming up. And then we'll be working collaboratively um, on a targeted revenue strategy for the College for Customized Training and Comprehensive Workplace Solutions and grants. Again, um, there's some changes happening in the system, and so these will be some focus areas for all of us. All of these goals are done obviously in, in collaboration with our college community and with Minnesota State. Um, and just working together we can and have done impactful work at CLC. And I, I look forward to um, you know, tackling all of these things in the upcoming year and, and working with all of you. 
Um, quick note, at, with the breakout sessions, um, we've got, uh, there's a web accounting and P-card session um, today and then tomorrow. It's really intended to be a hands-on session. We're gonna log into ISRS. Um, I've had some requests from faculty to actually to go into that system and help them navigate. Um, so I just want you to know it's gonna be a hands-on session and look forward to working with you on that. Um, again, good to see everyone. And with this, I'm gonna turn it over to Joy Bodine, our new Academic um, and Student Services VP. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, so uh, before Joy comes up, you know, we take opportunities to celebrate whenever we can. We usually send it via email. You know, we had some wonderful things to celebrate. Jeannie Gullickson got married, which is really exciting. She got left on like a Friday and was married and back. I don't know how that even happened, but congratulations, Jeannie. And where's Dawn? Dawn and Steve were just recently married. Congratulations. This is huge. And you are now Dawn Verdon. I love, that sounds great. Sounds like a movie star. But you know, every once in a while we have the opportunity to have a celebration in an audience like this. And Kari, who really, I'm not looking at her because I know what she's doing. Um, Kari really does not like to be celebrated at all. She has a very significant birthday on this very day. So <laughs> it's 20 years old. She's 20, Patrick. So. <laughs> I would really like if we could sing because we've got Peggy who is, where's Peggy? Peggy's here and we've got Steve and Sarah. Could we just sing happy birthday? But before we do that, is anyone else's birthday on this wonderful day? Oh, it's all about Kari then. Okay, let's sing happy birthday. Will you help us? Ready? Now I give you Joy Bodine. Well, good morning. good morning. I get that I am standing between you and your break, so I will make this quick. I know everybody wants to get up and move around. Um, so my name is Joy Bodine. I'm the new Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs. I started this position on July 1st, and I am excited to be here. It has been a whirlwind, moving, partially moving up here, getting the family up here, and connecting with people on campus. Since starting, I've been able to connect with faculty in liberal arts and in the technical programs. I've been able to do internal tours at the Brainerd, Staples, and West Campus. Maintenance has been gracious to bring me around externally. We've seen storage areas, which are really full, some of them. Um, but it was fun to see, and all the surrounding communities and everything that Central Lakes College has to offer. I am really excited to be here. And one of the things that Hera talked about this morning is this is a college that cares, it's a community, and that is what um, I think about every day as I'm meeting people and I'm getting lost in the hallways and people are like, no, you're going the wrong direction, go the other way. Um, or that's not where you want to park or I had a trouble finding the campus, driving around and so it was taking me a lot of time and they're like, no, go this road or that road. Everyone not only cares about the students they serve, but they care about the people that they work with. And I am so happy to be a part of that and I look forward to working with each of you this upcoming year and many years to come. And as I've had the opportunity to connect, to connect with people, it's really been about listening these last six weeks. I want to learn more about CLC, I want to become a part of it. I'm interested in what you're doing, your programs, your, the different subject areas, the students that you're working with, the projects that you're doing. I care about you. and. As you get started this year, you're gonna see me walk around and you're gonna be, why is she always in my classroom or my lab? What is she looking for? And it's, I'm not looking for anything. I just wanna learn and be a part of what you're doing and the excitement on campus. Since July, my husband and I, we've been able to go to a play. Last week, we saw students present, our natural resources students at Camp Ripley. 
and how great it is to be a two-year college and do so much research. I'm very impressed. And the students did a fantastic job. I was, had the privilege to attend the law enforcement graduation. And there are so many things every day going around campus that everyone may not know and be a part of. But every day when you look around, I was in the middle of a storm. And Jim over there, he's like, look at all the activities going on. There was a volleyball. Uh, there was either a practice or a game. And since there was no way you could get out to your car in the middle of the storm, I just sat down and watched the game. And it was just great fun. And so I'm really looking forward to being a part of this campus community every day, and it's already started to feel like home. But I want to transition, because I do have some academic and student affairs updates to give. Um, but again, I'm just looking forward to working with all of you and listening more, and that's building that relationship that's based on respect and moving forward together and walking the journey of where we are now, but where we're going in the future. So a brief update on academic and student affairs and realize I have a six week scope, so it won't be a long update. Um, and some of it's already been covered. But when in meeting with the deans and the supervisors and all the deans moving around to different areas, what I've learned is they're really excited about their new areas. They're excited of working with you, listening to you, supporting you in the work that you're doing and helping you move to that next place that you want to be with your programs, your subject areas, with the students, the clubs. So they are truly excited. And I, I can't emphasize that enough. They're excited about their new positions, but they're also really just looking forward to working with you. And they're excited about today, because today, this afternoon, they get to meet as a division. We've had a retreat and we've talked about goals and all the goals are aligned and they're gonna talk about their division goals and, and how you can be a part or not, but hopefully you wanna be a part of what we're doing this upcoming year. I was excited to learn and work with the psychology program and the new transfer pathways. That's just gonna be one of many opportunities to expand programming, give our students additional options. Um, but woohoo for the launch of the psychology transfer program. It's our newest program on campus. <laughs> Many of you know that we've held new faculty orientation right at the beginning of the year. It should have been last week. We didn't have a lot of new hires and faculty. So what we're launching this year is a series of four workshops. And it's not only open for new full-time faculty, but it's opened up to any new adjunct, any new full-time faculty, or any faculty that are interested in the topics that we're talking about. And so those will be the second week of the semester. From three to five, we're having one at the Brainerd campus, one at the Staples campus. Then we'll have one in November, January, and March. And it, each series of workshops will have different topics and different presenters. Please know everyone is welcome, and there'll be an email sent out about that um, later this week. And then also, as a big invitation this year, we are going to look at our whole scheduling process, where we're at today, where we want to be in the future, and all the um, parts in between. So when I say scheduling, I mean the registration dates, how the information flows from the faculty to the deans to be put in the schedule, um, how you change classes. So really, it's a task force that will meet this year. Sorry, I talk with my hands. Uh, meet this year and make recommendations. But don't worry if you're not on the committee because what will happen is there'll be multiple opportunities for feedback, there'll be surveys, there'll be focus groups. And it's, it's something that we don't want to change good things going on, but we also want a lot of feedback on where do we want to be in the next couple years with the scheduling process and what do we want to tackle first. Also, we'll be talking about new program development, and this is gonna take everyone at the college. You can't build a new program in a day, a week. There is a big process with Minnesota State to get through, but before that process happens, we'll need everybody's ideas, and so we'll be collecting ideas, then we're gonna make our list, we're gonna vet those ideas, look at the region, look at the costs, and then certain ideas are gonna rise to the top, 
and those are the tack what we're going to tackle first but we everyone at the college will have input on this on what will our future programs look like and then on <clears throat> as student affairs updates uh, oh and I want to talk a little bit about program review academic analysis and so sometimes I'll get terms wrong but what we're looking at this fall because I'm new to the college and I really want to learn about the good programming good programs that you have, the work that you do. But instead of doing academic analysis this fall, what I'm asking the deans to do is work with the faculty and create a one-page template of all the highlights that you have about your program. You're doing such good things with your advisory. You're building new transfer programs. So really, to present that to us on where's the program at now, what are your strengths, are there any opportunities that we want to work on over this next year? And then in the spring, we'll go back to a more traditional process of academic analysis. But this fall, it's really going to be celebrating what you're doing and, and doing a roadmap of what you want to accomplish this year. And student affairs, and this isn't just about student affairs, it's about all the work that we do together. So this year, the president talked about student success and enrollment as being high goals for the college, and those goals will continue this year. But in, in student affairs, and I can give you examples, they were very intentional about their communication. They picked up the phone and called people. They worked with Jesse on social media. And just to give you one example, which is not student affairs, but in financial aid and in the business office, when we had our drop for students, Oftentimes, colleges have a lot of drops for students who don't pay for classes. All teams across the college work together to contact via email, via calling, and that number came down to 24 students and only six on the Staples campus. And that is an incredible number, but it took everyone working together, and that is part of what keeps our enrollment stable. Also in financial aid, they were finding, you know, students when they're getting financial aid, it's often overwhelming. It's overwhelming to get into the site, and then you get this feedback and you don't know what to do. And so students were struggling with just logging in and knowing the next step. So Mike and his team, they decided it's not just okay to email people through email. They wanted to take a step back, and now they're sending regular mail along with the emails and they're making phone calls and so that is really it's very intentional they're thinking about how they communicate with students and the student flow from a prospect to an applicant to an enrolled student but also I want to thank each of you because I've heard from many of the faculty that have stopped by to see me and talk to me they've been calling students they've been meeting with pers you've been meeting with prospective students you've been meeting with groups you've been meeting with some of our athletes to make sure they're all ready and welcome and getting them the information they need to make great decisions about coming to CLC Something new for next year in financial aid that I th I'm really, really excited about over the last few years, we have not been, off been able to offer students Pell Grants in the summer, and I think it can affect enrollment. Also, it's hard for students to register if there's not funds available. So I want to let you know that that has changed, and next year students will be able to be offered Pell Awards. So think about that as you're putting a schedule together and offering courses, it's a great opportunity to keep our students on campus and engage what we're doing. And also, please stop down to the student link and welcome, um, student welcome center and the student link. I will get all the names right eventually. Um, we've been very intentional this year about adding additional registration sessions. Also, the timing, we've offered some in the afternoon. We're offering one this upcoming Saturday. But walk around, walk down there, say hello, ask what they're doing, and they're going to have open houses this fall. So please, please come down and celebrate their new centers. And when we talk about enrollment, and we're excited and celebrating that it's stable right now, and as it goes up and down, it's, we need all of us working together, and I'm excited about this year, because we're in a good place. 
We have big dreams for the future and big goals, but it's gonna take all of us working with each other. Sometimes it's what you do in the classroom, just working with one student. Uh, that time that you put in, it really makes a big difference. And something I know we're gonna talk about student success tomorrow, but something I want you to think about is maybe that student success day, you're opening a session for those students who are falling behind in your classes and you're just offering them extra support to catch up. Um, student success is why we're here, and I know each of you think about our students every day, and um, so I'm celebrating the fact that all of you care so much about your students, because that's what I hear when I walk around is, oh, I had a student who did this, or our students are doing this, and there's excitement. As people were coming in today, I had the opportunity to meet many of you. I've met many of you over the summer, I will tell you there will be times that I'll forget your name or call you the wrong name, but I will remember your story. And I am so appreciative that all of you have been so welcoming, and I look forward to walking this journey together. And there will be times where I stumble, but I also know that working together, those small stumbles doesn't matter because we'll continue to move forward in building that relationship based on respect. And I just look forward to the year to come and working with each of you.
we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, we're going to get started here. I need Diane and her whistle. All right, well, happy fall semester, everyone. Um, I kind of figured that this was going to happen, that we would get behind in the schedule, call me crazy. So in preparation for that, I sent you all an email this morning. So I am only going to highlight just a few of the things that are in that email. Uh, first of all, you heard last spring that we were going to be getting a new D2 l version over the summer. Uh, the rollout went fairly smoothly, so I'm really happy to report that. Um, I'm also very grateful and want to make sure all of you know that administration has supported um, giving me some release time again to do e-learning coordination. So uh, Liz will still be your first line of attack for any technical question and I will be doing some additional e-learning work uh, this fall semester so I'm really looking forward to that. So thank you to Hera and administration for that. Um, Professional development opportunities are just a couple things I want to kind of, again, like I said, highlight. There's a lot more in my email that I sent out this morning. Uh, Liz is going to be doing some trainings throughout the year. If there are certain things that you would like us to focus on, please contact either Liz or myself, and we'll try to make sure that we get a session open up to the entire campus because chances are you are not the only one wondering about a particular D12 tool or a particular issue. So make sure that you talk to either Liz or myself. Quality matters. If you are thinking of doing any kind of review this year, please talk to me before September 15th. Want to make sure that we have budget and uh, scheduling uh, ideas set up for the entire year so you don't have to do your review in the fall but if you're thinking of doing a quality matters review uh, just make sure you talk to me please before September 15th. Uh, there are a lot of other additional resources that are really great some self-evaluation some additional peer review uh, processes like the one that Lake Superior College uses and I'd be happy to talk to you about any of those other resources and I want to remind you about the faculty lounge so I was also just thinking something happened this morning that made me think maybe we should put some of our faculty resources on SharePoint so I might be uh, working on uh, that this uh, year two just to make it more accessible to you. Uh, on behalf of Julie Austin and myself, I would like to invite you to participate in the Online Instructional and Technology Committee. It's a great way to share ideas, learn a little bit more about what other people are doing in their classes, whether it's hybrid, online, or just using different D2L tool tools. So uh, please make sure that you uh, watch for Julie's upcoming email about those meetings. Uh, we have a special training opportunity today at 11 o'clock in room B214 from the D2L Corporation and from the Minnesota State System Office. We have two people here today that are going to be talking about UCU, which is a new video conferencing tool through D2L. And it's a great tool that allows you to do all sorts of different things, um, not only as a faculty member, but gives students the options to create videos as well. And it's integrated right within D2L, so things like rubrics and grade books and everything is already synced, which is fantastic. So if you're interested in that, this is the plug for that. Um, again, room 214, B214 at the 11 o'clock breakout. Last but not least, again, there's a lot more in that email, but I want to uh, make sure that everybody is aware that we are doing the Bright Start orientation program again. Last year, last fall, we had over 500 students complete that and participate in the contest portion. We had many, many more students than that complete the course or at least attempt parts of it. So that's a really high number and we are going to, Liz is sending out an email I believe today about it to students 
And we already have students who have completed it and submitted their certificate for the contest for fall. They're just already in and looking and exploring and have already completed that entire orientation. But we, as online instructors and those that work with D2L, I've heard lots of reports about students not having as many questions because they've already gotten in and have explored the tools and kind of know a little bit more about what to do. So um, that's a great uh, way to get students familiar with D2L so that you can spend your time working on the content versus the navigation. And one last thing that I want to mention about that, the D2L theme for this year was reach every learner. And as I've been hearing people talk about today's uh, kind of topics that kind of keep boiling up, I just wanted to bring that up because I think that's something, as a faculty member, that is something that's near and dear to most of us, but it's just kind of, I liked the phrase of that, reach every learner. And I think that that's something that you're gonna be hearing more about from me in terms of universal design for learning and inclusive uh, design practices, whether that's face-to-face -face or online or hybrid. So watch for that. Um, again, the contest for Bright Start will have drawings Monday through Friday. All the drawings will be at noon, and there will be swag given away every day with the grand prize on Friday being drawn at noon from all the students who have submitted their certificate as proof to the fall contest uh, folder, which is in the Bright Start course. And that grand prize is swag along with a $50 gift certificate to our bookstore. So thank you to our bookstore for that. And if you have any additional questions, you can go back to the email or talk to Liz or I. But on behalf of all of those involved with e-learning, I wish you all a happy and successful fall semester and school year 2017-2018. Have a good one. Well, Hera has asked me to talk briefly about our community building team and uh, some of the work that we have done and uh, a lot of the work that we have yet to do. So as we, Hera mentioned, uh, last spring semester, that we got a team together and uh, started the work of our community building team, beginning with the development of a mission statement. And uh, the group came up with, uh, we're feeding off of a CLC mission statement, we build community. We're going to be working this year uh, to, to uh, develop our CLC employee values and to identify the culture that we are trying to create in addition to coming up with a, a calendar of, of events that will be sustainable through the coming years. Some of the activities sponsored over the last year were things like uh, the Raider tailgating party, uh, flannel Friday, I think there was a hat Friday, um, the ice fish fishing extravaganza. Uh, we joined the NR group uh, for candlelight skiing, which turned out not to be candlelight skiing, but candlelight walking uh, at Cathio. And then we did our end of the year get together at Yesterday is Gone, which uh, turned out, I think, to be a really fun event. So we're looking for new ideas and we're looking for new fresh uh, blood. So I will be sending out uh, an invitation for anyone who has interest in joining this fun group uh, to uh, join us in our meetings throughout fall and spring semester. Uh, this Thursday, uh, the C community building team will be sponsoring uh, an event at uh, the Roundhouse. And so we're encouraging your participation Thursday following our in-service between four and six at the Roundhouse Brewery. And that's located in the old Burlington Northern Shops in uh, Northeast Brainerd. Uh, the community building team and administrators will be finding, or <clears throat> be providing snacks for everyone. Uh, there'll be um, whatever drinks that you would like to imbibe. And then we're gonna have some music by Lily Charlier, our ukulele playing friend. Um, so again, we still have many ideas to implement this year. Uh, we're looking to design a family-friendly holiday event. That will be one of the first things on the list. And we've been able to get a small budget. Uh, I twisted some arms on the executive team, and we do have some sm uh, small funds to work with. Uh, but we will also be working to redesign our employee recognition event. That will be one of the big tasks this year. 
because as I said, I've been emceeing that event for the last 15 years, and so it will need to change. And I hope we can bring forward many uh, fun and new ideas to, uh, <coughs> to consider. So we are looking for ideas. We're looking to have more participation. And again, would welcome um, your ideas on how to get that participation from everyone at CLC. And so please let me know if you're interested in joining, like I said, this fun group. Uh, we're task oriented, but we do manage, to, again, to have some great conversation and some good fun. So I would hope um, everyone uh, and would welcome everyone to uh, join us. And with that, Paul's going to talk. Yes. A rising star, yes. <clears throat> all right, good, good morning, everyone. It's so glad to have you all back. Thank God you're all back. You know, a guy, can only, <laughs> a guy can only plan and develop and meet with people for so long before you just say, let's sail this ship and get kids here and get our students here. Um, thankfully, during the summer, we have a number of registration sessions, so I'm able to get in front of our students and talk to them. I love getting in front of our students. Um, so we've had a little bit of action, and even in the last couple days, uh, it's been great to see lines outside the Campus Welcome Center. The student link that you've heard uh, referenced is this great kind of central area where we have our awesome financial aid advising staff, our advising staff, our recruiter, and Lynn Anderson with assessment. So we've had students and all sorts of families inside there. So it's been great to have that kind of activity. But again, I'm ready to get going. So it's, it's just great to have you all here and, and kickstart this year off. Um, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed the registration sessions because like I said, I get to get in front of students and uh, I really enjoy that. And Harris mentioned my red shoes. Um, they are fairly sizable red shoes. And when I first started wearing them, you know, I got a lot of looks and somebody even asked me if they were therapeutic in some way. <laughs> um, and I said no, uh, but you know, and they are very frivolous kind of superficial things, but you know, they do kind of lighten it up a little bit. And when I kind of got into student services, there wasn't a whole lot of lightness there. There were a lot of clenched jaws and, and just kind of heads down. And so, you know, I really wanted to start to infuse a spirit of, of loosening up because that's, to me, that's what growth and learning is about. I mean, learning is risk taking, right? You move from a place of ignorance to knowledge, but in order to, to start at that place, you have to feel like you're, you're, you're secure and you're comforted and you're supported there. And so I know that, that was very much true in our student services staff. So. We've run up all sorts of ideas up the flagpole. I encourage you to bring all and any ideas my way. Some are not going to work. They're going to fall flat on their face. But, you know, I think we, we have really worked hard to get that, that looseness and that spirit of risk taking. And I try to tell our students that too. Um, and when I'm in front of those students, you know, I talk about, look, you're going to meet people today. You're going to meet faculty. You're going to meet staff. You're going to meet administrators. And as professionals, these folks are really passionate about really three core things. And I say, first of all, we're very passionate about Central Lakes College. We honestly believe to every person that you will meet that this is the best place for you to continue your educational and personal growth journey. And I also say we're passionate about education. I think everybody in this room really believes in the, the transformative power that learning and education uh, can give everybody. And then finally I say, and we're all passionate about you, the students, because that's why we're here. We want to see you succeed. We want to see you grow. And so I really encourage our students to reach out to everybody, ask questions, seek support, go for resources. So I just want you to know that's the message that we're sending at those registration sessions. And from the students I've met in all of our programs, uh, we got another great group coming this fall. So I'm really excited to get the ball rolling. Um, I'm here to talk about not all that really, but the Student Success Committee. Um, this is a committee made up of faculty, staff, and administration. 
and I certainly want to um, read the names of those people because they worked hard and we met a lot, probably more than folks thought we would. Um, Anna Marquette was part of that group, Alita Requi peterson um, John Molesky, Karen Tregan as part of faculty, Charles Black Lance, Diane Breitling, Janet Gonteric, Julie Joel Eisen, Larson, Michael Barnaby, Terry Duff, and myself. But I especially want to point out the work that Dave Kobilka did. He, he really facilitated and coordinated those discussions. Uh, he was really the, the leader of that group. So let's give Dave a hand, because he was phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you, Dave, for all that work. It, it was really, really appreciated. Um, we started meeting in the uh, spring of 2017. We met uh, about seven times throughout the, the spring semester. And we were focusing on students to discuss strategies, try to come up with a timeline, and then forward some options and some ideas for moving forward. Um, so I'm going to get quickly to those recommendations. We looked at a lot of data, data from the SESI and the uh, survey of student entering student engagement surveys. Uh, we also looked at a number of uh, resources, redesigning America's community colleges, a matter of degrees. So we really used a lot of data to help inform our decision making. And a lot of what we found is that many of our key supportive services, uh, such as advising, career counseling, tutoring, and computer labs even, we have great resources that are underutilized by a lot of the students who really would benefit from those support services. So it was kind of information and data like that that helped infuse our work. Uh, the recommendations that the committee uh, forwarded and suggested um, move forward uh, was certainly continued emphasis on financial literacy training. Uh, we already have some great uh, um, great teaching and learning that takes place in a number of our CCST courses related to financial literacy. That gives us a great base to continue to advance and build on. Uh, but, and I know this financial literacy has been a, a, a topic of discussion in years past. I don't think it's going away. I think it's still important. So we're going to certainly work on continuing to advance uh, more financial literacy training and learning for our students. Um, secondly, infuse research-supported high-engagement, high-retention strategies in our activities campus-wide. One direct uh, um, uh, program related to that is uh, a program called AVID, which stands for Advancement via Individual Determination. It's a uh, college um, and career readiness type of strategies, and so we're going to offer that professional development opportunity to, uh, to faculty and staff. And that'll probably begin with a, a, a trip to the national conference in December. So I'll be looking for information related to that. That's uh, funded through a, a NJPA innovative funding grant that we partnered with a number of high schools in the area. So it has the potential to be a great recruitment and retention tool as well. We also talked a lot about, about uh, connection and students being able to identify a, a network of, of connections and relationships and influence at CLC. Um, and working on developing maybe a trio or four to five uh, CLC faculty, staff, and or admin who they could go to with questions about what's happening in, at, at CLC with their learning. So helping students develop a network of contacts. So that'll be a, another initiative that we're, we'll talk about and forward for next year. We've also talked about maybe some late start mini courses, especially for students on academic warning. Um, and all the benefit that could offer those students. We already have kind of something that we can uh, base that on. Uh, but again, that would be another initiative that we're moving forward. And then we also talked about a number of other issues. Uh, increased consciousness all around about cognitive-based learning approaches, such as the growth mindset, college-level habits and behaviors, um, competencies um, in college that help students succeed. Um, we talked a lot a bit. I want to mention Scott Street too. He wasn't on the committee, but he found himself roped into our work because we were trying to look at a digital advising system for students that could help them connect their DARS reports more with their program planners. And so we went down that a little bit. This was one of the re uh, recommendations that came from Adam Marcotte's honor students. And I got to give credit to Scott. He really dug into that, looked into it. 
And in the end, we decided system office seems to be coming up with something that we can use beginning next year. So we're going to kind of wait and see how that evolves. But hopefully it's a program that, again, will allow students to connect their credits more with their, their program planners. And then continued uh, connection building um, opportunities for students throughout the college. I think one of the things that makes CLC really great is the opportunity for connection and experience with our students. And experience, that means participation and engagement. I think we have all sorts of ways that we offer that to students. And I think continuing to build off those um, can only um, make sense. So thank you. That's the Student Success Committee. We'll, we're continuing that work, so we're, uh, like Nancy said, we'll be recruiting new members for that committee, so uh, be looking for communications uh, in that regard. Thanks. I just wanted to go over some of the logistics for the breakout sessions. So I'm going to go over the room numbers, and anything that starts with a two is upstairs. If you're new like me, anything with a room number that starts with one is on this level. Um, web accounting and PCAR training will be in A137. Student conduct, classroom management, B205. Club advisor training, A111. UCU, D2L, feature video, B214. The egg and energy tour, and I am promised that you will not get wet. You'll be on the bus or look in the machine looking at machines. Um, you're going to meet at the fireplace, but for everyone, I just wanted to let you know we are, um, not we, uh, the Egg and Energy Center is selling apples. Uh, they are a dollar a pound, and um, they'll be right at the fireplace too, and any apples that aren't sold today actually go to food sustainability and helps out other family families in the community but they're great apples so come and buy a pound and we'll see you back here at lunch <laughs>